What is happening? Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to a video. I'm Joe Gilder. Check it out, homestudiocorner.com if you never have. All your dreams will come true. I want to show you something super interesting. I've been on a bit of a quest to... Well, actually, let me rewind. A couple of videos ago, I posted about how I was able to transform this electric guitar sound using a single notch filter. So a notch filter is a really steep cut with an EQ. Since then, I've been on a bit of a notching frenzy. I have found so many applications, specifically on vocals and guitars mostly, where notching out a specific frequency has solved so many problems. And a couple of different situations. One, the vocal was sounding too sibilant, but the de was making it sound too dull and just rolling off the highs made things sound dull. But f notching out a specific frequency that was the main frequency that was ringing out with the S's and the T's solved everything. The vocal was still bright and airy, but it took away that sharpness that was there. So will a notch filter fix all your problems? No, but is it something you should absolutely add to your arsenal? Yes. I, uh, I've got one really good example I'm going to show you here, and um, I'll kind of show you how I go about finding them and taking care of them. There's actually, you know what, there's one more I'm going to show you as well. I'll go find it in a second. But the first one I'll show you is on this lead vocal. So this is a song we mixed during Dueling Mixes last month. And uh, just listen to the vocal. It's a great vocal performance. Things are sounding good. I'm working no play. Don't make Very cool song, very cool artist. Okay, so the vocal sounds great. And when you have great sounding vocals, that's fantastic. Problem though, was the original vocal, and it's going through my vocal processing over here, which we're not talking about today. Here's what it sounds like without a couple of notches that I put in there. Listen to it specifically at this part. Tell me. And I'm not gonna tell you what to listen for. You listen first, and then tell me what you hear. Tell me up, you don't say. Get away, get away, get away, get away. It's time to open your mouth and close your eyes. Okay, what did you hear? Write it down. I'm kidding, don't write it down. But what I hear, and what was poking out even in the whole mix. Tell me up, you don't say. Get away, get away, get away, get away. He's saying the words, he's singing the words, get away. And when he says, guh, there's this sharpness that comes out. It's, it's almost spiky. It's a specific frequency is what it is. Listen again to the g, g. There's this kind of frequency that's coming out with the way, just, it's just the way his voice is with the sound of the room and the compression and all of those combined are causing this specific frequency, actually two, to ring out. So listen to that again. Tell me up, you don't say. Get away, get away, get away, get away. Now, I notched out two frequencies and listen to what sound what it sounds like now. I'll show you the EQs in a, in a second, but listen to the difference, how much less harsh those G sounds are without really changing the sound of the vocal at all. Tell me up, you don't say, get away, get away, get away, get away. Okay, you've got that versus before. Get away, get away, get away. After. Get away, get away, get away. Before. Get away, get away, get away. After. Get away, get away, get away. That's game changing. Even in a full mix, you can tell a difference. Get away, get away, get away, get away. It, one, they jumped out. The other one, they were at the right spot where they needed to be. Here are the frequencies I notched. Ended up being two very close frequencies. I started with one and then went for the other. So let me get rid of the higher one and we'll start with the lower one. So here's that frequency. Here's the vocal. Let me remember this so I don't mess it up. Get away. Let me solo it. Get away, get away. I'm going to turn the things down so we don't make it super annoying for you. Get away, get away, get away, get away. It's time to open. Your get away, get away, get away, get away. It's time to open. Get away, get away, get away, get away. It's time to open. Get away, get away, get away. You hear that frequency? It's annoying, right? Get away, get away, get away. Really annoying. Get away, get away. Get okay. So, that frequency, what's interesting is that frequency is is accented regardless of what he's singing. It's most pronounced here, but actually throughout the vocal, if we went and played the whole vocal, you'd hear that frequency ringing out. What does that mean? Probably that this is sort of a resonant frequency in whatever room he recorded. 
Now, that doesn't matter what it is, but when I hear a frequency that doesn't just jump out with certain notes, but is kind of there all the time, I know I can probably notch that and get away with it. So the first one, we notch that, and it starts to sound better. Get away, get away, get away, get away. Here's before. Get away, get away, get away, get away. It's a little softer, but not a whole lot softer. It's still something else. So I came in and found another frequency right here. Get away, get away, get away, get away. It's time to get away, get away. Get... That's the main frequency we've been hearing in the mix. We notch that bad boy down about 14 dB and... Get away, get away, get away, get away. Get away, get away. Get away, get away, get away, get away. I mean, it is just game-changing sound. And what it's the kind of thing that, now that you've heard it, if you heard the mix without that EQ, you'd lose your mind, right? You'd be listening along thinking, okay, this is great, and then you'd want to plug your ears. I'm working no play, don't make it okay. Tell me up, you don't say. Get away, get away, get away, get away, it's time. To now that's all you hear. And that's what I'm hoping to do is to make you more annoyed as a mixer. Not really, but so you can hear those frequencies that are happening. Before, you might have heard that and say, eh, there's something kind of harsh about it, but I don't know what it is. Or it's too compressed, or it needs to have just all the highs need to come down, or you may not have noticed anything at all. But then you may have listened on small speakers or on earbuds, and it might have jumped out at you as really annoying, and you still aren't sure what it is. Well, now you know it might be something that you need to notch. We turn that EQ back on and listen to the same segment, and it sounds fine to us and doesn't bother our precious little ears. I'm working no play, don't make it okay. Tell me up, you don't say. Get away, get away, get away, get away. It's time to. It sounds like a normal vocal now. Mission accomplished. You know what? I was going to show you another one, but it'd be the same thing. It's a certain frequency that was ringing that I notched out that made it sound better and less harsh. That tends to be the theme. The ringing usually is happening up in the. 1 kilohertz up to maybe you know up as high as 4, 5, 6, 7. If it's more sibilant sounds, it's in the 5 to 7 kilohertz range-ish. If it's more of a, a note ringing out, it tends to be in that 1 to 5K range or so. You know what? I do have one I want to show you. I take it back. Let's go find, I think it was this one. This was interesting. This was actually the acoustic guitar itself. Nope, it wasn't on this one. Let's try the other one. There's an acoustic guitar, and the guitar itself has a frequency that rings. In a certain key, um, it just rings out, and it's the most bizarre sort of thing. Um, and I went into the room to see if it was the microphone or the placement or the room, and he, whether he played the guitar in there or in here, I could hear this ringing happening. So I actually just put an EQ on the track to fix it. Someday. Let's do this. Let's go to the verse, it might be a little easier there. I don't know if you can hear that, but in the EQ, I had to EQ these out. You hear that? And I, I, no matter mic placement, uh, placement in the room didn't matter because the guitar had that sound. So I just found the frequency with an EQ. And notching that out brought up another frequency that sounded off. And it sounds better. Is it the best thing in the world? No, but it's... It's made it usable and a, a good sounding acoustic that in a full band production will be just fine. And you won't have this annoying thing happening that you can't pinpoint because you heard it in the recording. You went ahead and put the notch filter on the track itself and it will never come back to haunt you again. So lesson today, folks, notch filters are your friend. Don't overdo it, but don't forget they exist because they could get you out of a pickle in a hurry. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe from homestudiocorner.com. Peace.